of the Middle East, young Palestinian stone throwers and militants are treated as adults, held in adult jails, tried in military courts. Some are as young as 12. Israel's treatment of these children breaks international law, but ITV News has been given exclusive access to one of these courts. In the second of our series, Too Young to Die, Chris Rogers reports now on Israel's child prisoners of war. The child's crime of hate. The parents' sense of loss. The state's illegal child prisoners of war. Every 12 hours, a Palestinian child is arrested. In the last six years, 5,200 have been imprisoned by Israel. Their crimes, defiance against the state, they blame for their misery. They are provoked and encouraged to retaliate, children as young as eight, full of anger. But is putting them behind bars the route to peace, or yet more hatred? These are the pictures children draw here. Soldiers with guns, barbed wire, prison bars and rats. This is 13-year-old Yusuf's underground cell and the outside area where he spent just 30 minutes a day. They stamped on my neck when they arrested me. They said my father is a militant and I must pay for his crimes. Israel was held in a detention centre for weeks but her case never went to court. Once, the guards showed us what they would do if we ran away. They threw tear gas into the cell. It's judgment day for yet more Palestinian children. For their parents, it's the only opportunity to catch a glimpse of their imprisoned child. For Kafea, the hours hem behind barbed wire, waiting to go inside the military court, is nothing compared to the three-month wait to see her 15-year-old daughter. Ayat and dozens of other child prisoners are transferred from a detention centre to face Israeli justice. We are the first foreign film crew allowed to join their parents and film their illegal trials. Finally, Ayat can see her parents, but they're told they're not allowed to speak or reach out to her, or they can exchange as a smile. Ayat seems so fragile and disturbed. I'm shocked when she admits to trying to stab an Israeli soldier at a checkpoint. A lawyer provided by the human rights group Defence for Children International argues Ayat was provoked and needs a psychological study. When she bursts into tears, we're told to stop filming. The process is over in just a few seconds. She's just a child. Just a child, she sobs. And she's right. International law states she should be treated like one. I didn't witness that here. This treatment should only be a last resort. So why did I see other child prisoners, like thousands before them, shackled and imprisoned for months waiting for trial? Even Israel's own laws state children should be rehabilitated, not punished. Under international law, they should be tried in a juvenile system. They've been tried in a military course and put in an adult jail. I most definitely think that these are things that Israel needs to address. We have certainly gone forward over the years. We're not in the same situation that we used to be. This is the boy who inspired me to investigate Palestinian child prisoners. Filmed by a local cameraman, 12-year-old Rakan Inseret was Israel's youngest convict. He was sentenced to six months in jail after a two-year trial. After two attempts to kill himself in his cell, the Israeli authorities released Rakan. As Rakan made his way down this road to a remote Israeli military checkpoint, he was fired upon several times and killed. He wasn't armed and he wasn't carrying explosives. Only Rakan will know why he waved around what turned out to be a cigarette lighter in the shape of a gun. His mother believes he provoked his own death. She holds every side in the conflict responsible for his suicide. What was that? She told me anyone with a mind, a conscience, we all should learn lessons from what happened to my son. Chris